Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon and God, I tell you, I tell you, you just can't make this stuff up, right? Uh, we're gonna talk about MAGFest, poking fun at Kotaku at their convention on a convention sign and uh, Twitter getting angry at them and them being called Gamergate. That's, that's what this video is about. Absolutely ridiculous. I found out about it uh, by clicking on what's happening. Gamergate was trending again. I'm like, why in the hell is it trending in 2023? And sure enough, uh, sure enough, if you criticize Kotaku in any capacity, you are Gamergate. Did you know that even in 2023, even almost 10 years after the fact, uh, you are GG. So we're going to talk about this ridiculous situation with MAGFest. Uh, MAGFest being criticized for making a jab at Kotaku's journalistic integrity, and it had nothing to do with Gamergate. It was actually about Kotaku taking them to task last year for the number of people that had uh, come down with cases of COVID. That's what it was about. It had nothing to do with uh, GG. So we're gonna talk about that. Gotta give a hat tip to Lunar Archivist who tagged me in on it uh, initially, and then I saw that uh, GG was trending and I'm like, what the hell? And here we are guys. Uh, they're not going to let this die for sure. So before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants guys uh, for 284,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. Greatly appreciate We do talk about the video game industry. We talk about gaming journos. We are not Gamergate. We weren't even around for Gamergate. I would like to think that most people would like to leave that whole situation in the rear view mirror, but over the last couple months, I've seen uh, you know indicators that some people really uh, don't want that gravy train to end. And I'm not talking about the uh, the alt right Yahtzees. I'm not talking about the toxic fans, the man baby gamers. I'm talking about the journalists. I'm talking about the websites that, uh, in a roundabout way, profited off of the outrage. You know, people were going to their sites to hate on their articles, but the reality was is they were still going to the websites, giving them ad revenue. And uh, yeah, so. Let's walk this back a little bit, and then we'll look at some of these ridiculous, uh, ridiculous reactions. Apparently, Magfest, which for those of you who don't know, it's going on right now. It is a a gaming gaming music festival in Maryland, uh, pretty well known in Maryland. They had a sign up that uh, uh, rankled rankled Twitter. This is coming from VideoGameChronicle.com. Magfest criticized for public jab. Oh, public jab at games website Kotaku. The gaming event questioned the publication's journalistic in integrity on the signage. So here's here are the signs, right? Let's look at these. This is great. I actually think this is hilarious. Magfest, CCG. All right, D and D Adventure League. Okay, that way. D and D Free Play. Okay, that way. Simulations that way. Pathfinder that way. Pathfinder Free Play that way. Kotaku's journalistic integrity. Four oh four. for all right uh they said they're gonna pull the banner down we'll, we'll get to that point but let's let's talk about this first um the magfest official twitter account has acknowledged the issue replying to patrick uh, klepek's tweet it wrote hey magfest community we've heard you loud and clear it was a joke that we printed on our signage this year and it absolutely did not land for clarity it was intended to poke fun at one line in an article written about our COVID response last year, it was immediately pulled from the floor. Apology continued into a second tweet, again directed uh, to Patrick and not the attendee who initially raised the issue. We understand that most people did not receive it as such and that it made people feel unsafe. Unsafe. If you criticize Kotaku, you're, un you're unsafe. <laughs> We're deeply sorry to our community and to Kotaku for this error, and we will do better with our banter in the future. Oh, my God. Okay, so this is what it was about. As I understand it, last year, uh, Kotaku did a hit piece on MAGFest saying that they had a lot of COVID cases. Uh, they did. Now, the weird thing is, is I'm looking at their website, and they're actually one of the few cons I can think of, you know, that still requires a vaccine, a proof of vaccination and uh, masks and all of that. Most of the conventions on the East Coast that I'm aware of. Most of them have actually dropped all of the mandates, but they still have it. They said MAGFest organizers stated, 59 out of 10,000 attendees have tested positive for COVID. This is last year. Some of the cases likely occurred before the festival. Yeah, this is, I mean, look, anytime you have a large gathering of people, right? 
you're going to get COVID. People got COVID at San Diego Comic-Con, despite being vaccinated. People got COVID at New York Comic-Con, despite being, being vaccinated, right? We avoided COVID for two years. We took one trip to Florida and we, we came back with COVID. I mean, it's just, it's going to happen, right? You know, and Kotaku's like, when in doubt, uh, when in doubt, uh, don't attend large gatherings and certainly think twice before hanging out in any CUM, CUM rooms. I don't even know what that's about. I don't know if that's about. Anyway, the post rapidly gained traction on Twitter with some senior members of the game industry and media condemning it, particularly its perceived reference to the Gamergate movement. Kotaku was also at the center of the Gamergate harassment campaign in 2014. The movement fostered harassment of women and minorities in the games industry, according to Wikipedia. With specific focus paid to Kotaku due to a false allegation that a staff member favorably reviewed a game due to a relationship with the developer. The movement, which largely emerged from 4chan and Reddit, would go on to have a large part in sparking the alt-right movement. Citation, please. Citation, please. It's also been noted that uh, Kotaku reported last year on MAGFest allegedly serving as a spreader event for uh, COVID. It's been suggested that coverage of this incident is what could have led to the seeming retaliation for MAGFest. That's exactly what it was. In fact, if you go to their website and you go to their policy for Super MAGFest 2023, uh, all attendees six month, months of age and older at Super MAGFest are required to have their original COVID-19 vaccine series. You must show proof of vaccination to pick up your badge. Uh, same with masks. You have to wear masks. I don't know if that was the case last year, but uh, a lot of people were criticizing any convention for daring to have a convention during a pandemic. Uh, you know, again, true story. We went to several conventions during the pandemic. We went to several in the Pittsburgh area. We went to one in Ohio. Uh, and uh, yeah, we didn't pick up COVID until we went to Florida. And I think it came from the airplane. Pretty sure it came from the airplane because there were some people that were hacking in front of us. And uh, of course, you know, you're breathing recycled air. So I think that that's probably where it came from. And of course, you know, we're flying spirit at the time. So if we're going to get sick, it's going to be on a spirit flight. <laughs> So here we go. Uh, Frank Cifaldi, Cifaldi, co-director of the Video Game History Foundation, referred to this signage as a dog whistle, which is the use of suggestive language to garner support from a particular group without provoking opposition. He said uh, he said he was due to give a pair of talks at MAGFest and now felt less excited about him. Gamergate dog whistle is about the last thing I expected to see at this show. I'm very disappointed in the organization for displaying this. I'm on the hook for two talks here that I was excited to give, and this is maybe lose steam. I've been told the sign is gone now. I get it. They're mad about an article from a year ago, but I totally forgot about that, and I'm sure others did too. For me as a casual observer, this was Kotaku in action. It made me feel gross for being here. Huge yikes. Why do they always talk like this? God, so other YouTubers have avoided this out too. It's all the same language. Like, huge yikes. Like, oh my God. Huge yikes that the people running MAGFest are a bunch of Gamergate people. Responding to the criticism, responding to the criticism, MAGFest communications director, Dak Croach, 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 claimed that the signage was a friendly jab. See, that's the joke, jab. Get it? Jab? No. Anyway, we love Kotaku, he wrote on Twitter. I'll put up a little heart and JK on the sign so people know it's in jest. That's some pretty damning uh, accusations there, saying that this... <laughs> ridiculous, ridiculous joke of a sign is an alt-right dog whistle. Uh, Troy Levitt, Troy Levitt, who was on the receiving end of cancel culture because he dared work on the Harry Potter game, Hogwarts Legacy, which speaking of Hogwarts Legacy, while we're talking about ridiculous people, uh, we've got this Twitch streamer. I mean this with every fiber of my being. Fuck you if you buy Hogwarts Legacy. 300,000 views, 298 quote tweets, 3,000 likes. Ah, we've got uh, Guster Buster here. People who still bring up Gamergate are like those Japanese soldiers who never left the forest for decades after the war ended. Exactly. What the hell is going on here? If you want to watch weirdos treat Kotaku as though it were a protected class, just look at the reactions right now to this poster. I'm waiting for people to be like, oh my God, MAGFest. That stands for, for MAGAFest. Am I right? Am I right? Uh, God, MAGFest. What the F is this Gamergate shit? Why is MAGFest using a Gamergate dog whistle from 2015? They're not. They're not. Oh, God. 
Anyway. <laughs> Every time I'm reminded of Gamergate, I take immense psychic damage. Uh, one of the many, many reasons why it felt like we're on a cultural, cultural treadmill for the past decade is that Gamergate never actually ended. No, it did. It's just that the media keeps bringing it up because they love the traffic. They'll, they'll claim that they're the victims, but they love the traffic and they keep trying to bring it back up, in my opinion. Same reason that these other websites bring up The Last Jedi, because they want to be attacked. They want to be attacked so they can damsel, so they can get hits because their websites are dying. Kotaku is dying. The sign's been pulled already, thankfully, but JC, what is this? 2014 Gamergate shit in the wild would make me so uncomfortable, and I don't care either way objectively about Kotaku as an outlet. It's the ethics and games journalism vibes dog whistle. Truly exhausting how the game industry keeps pretending Gamergate bullshit ever ended. It did. It did. You keep bringing it, bringing it back up. MAGFest is run by Gamergate now. Yes, it's MAGFest, guys. It's MAGFest. Anyway, I'd love to not see Gamergate dog whistles at my otherwise lovely and excellent nerd festival. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, this is ridiculous, guys. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. And we'll talk later.